Hello YouTube and welcome back to the channel outside the target demographic. Today I'm going to be making the wife's buddy scooter a little more utilitarian. Let's get started. This is the wife's, not my, buddy scooter. She's had it about 15 plus years now. It'll get like 90 miles per gallon without trying, which is pretty impressive. Uh, with a one gallon capacity tank, you can go almost 100 miles if you baby it. And um, it's actually a pretty decent go into town mobile. But what it doesn't have is exterior storage. So what it does have, you use the key to unlock it. And you'll actually be able to fit a full size helmet or two gallons of milk in here. It's not a small capacity lockable storage. But what we're going to be adding today is we're going to be deleting the silver here and replacing it with a rack. And then I have also already purchased a pink um, trunk that is also locking for her. And she can either remove the trunk and use this and just strap things to it. Or she can use the trunk and where the passenger would be, she can use a cargo netting and strap additional stuff to it. So this is a great way during the spring, summer, fall to save gas by not driving that and um, get ridiculous fuel efficiency and enjoy the ride to and from work a little bit. So... Basically, we're just going to be removing the silver stock uh, sissy bars and putting on the luggage rack. With a socket set and screwdriver, we're going to remove this panel here, see if there is or isn't anything under it. And then we have one, two bolts there. Uh, this is, I believe, like $90 on Amazon currently. And it's going to give us a lot more utility with this vehicle. Um, I don't think uh, the the biggest issue is you can't really retrofit or uh, make to fit a typical rack because the seat does open as you saw and anything going across it is going to reduce the uh, storage capacity. So this is a custom one. It's a hundred bucks. Uh, you know, the first year of usage, it's going to pay for itself. But let's see what's under here and then loosen one, two. And as we see, there is a nut here. These appear to be a 12 millimeter and this is as well. So a 12 millimeter socket will get you this guy off. Let's do it. With those three loose, this guy lifts right off. Keep those washers and all and now is a good time to go ahead and clean the places you weren't able to access before you put the new rack on much cleaner than it was we're already here we might as well knock it out it does come with new blackened hardware so it doesn't contrast quite so much as the silver does and uh we'll just go ahead and start zipping it back together there appear to be no instructions with this so we're going to make do a rather large collar will go here it will act as a spacer in between the bottom of this hole and the scooter on top of that we will have a rubber washer and a nut this one we have a locking washer a smaller one on top of a medium size washer the largest ones here are going to distribute the weight against the plastic which you can already tell has a couple of cracks and all so we want to distribute that weight over the larger area on the plastic versus on top and do that times two a slight update i originally set it up with the locking washer the smaller washer and then the larger washer when this is tightened in place you'll see the washers actually makes contact with the seat so every time you open and close this you're going to start cutting through and eventually uh, ripping through that seat so instead we did this we have the big washer with the next size smaller washer uh, scaling down that weight distribution a little bit because you know you're going to be putting hundreds of pounds up there and then we have the locking washer here with the bolt and you'll see there's a little bit more clearance there so that is how i would set that up um what i'm liking oh and then the rubber gasket here i actually put underneath so it's going to absorb the shock a little bit more but uh right off the rip i will say the lighting for this is not ridiculously powerful who'd have guessed so the fact that you're going to have a shelf here blocking some of the sunlight, especially when we put the trunk on it, is by uh, contrast going to make this look much brighter because it's perpetually going to be in the dark and it's going to uh, get a little bit more attention. 
which is what you want. Additionally, you kind of have a handle here for when you're trying to uh, put it on its center stand, which it's on right now. Gives you a little bit more leverage. Not that I need it, but uh, typically women are a little bit less strong than men, it turns out. So this gives you a little bit of a holding area, and it still gives you the ability for um, sissy bars if you have a passenger on there with the added benefit of a backrest for when we have the trunk on there, and we'll see that later on. So again, an addendum made right here. Let's tighten it up. With a 13 millimeter and an Allen, we got it all locked into place. Again, that rubber gasket I put under this guy, that's the part that's going to have the most leverage in between the uh, payload and the pivot point. So I went ahead and put it under there. Looks pretty decent. Now let's go ahead and drag out the trunk and see if we can't get it fit. I think that's going to blend quite nicely. She got this from a friend who I guess had it on her scooter before it died or whatever. So it's just as sun faded and crusty. So I think it'll blend in quite nicely. The benefit, again, we still have access to the seat. We're essentially doubling the cargo capacity with the trunk. So we have a mounting bracket here, which is pretty nice in that I'll be able to eject the trunk off of the scooter and then she can use a milk crate or strap a lunch box or cooler whatever she wants to to uh make it a bigger payload that she can carry or you know if she has to bring something to and from work she can just swap this out with other things so let's go ahead and figure out how that all works a bit of hardware here for mounting the bracket and then i imagine the lock would be how you would um both lock this guy shut as well as detach it, but let's find out together. If in doubt, sort it out. Again, we do not have instructions on how to assemble this. So put all the pieces parts out and we know that we have twice as many of these as we do of those. And we have different length nuts and bolts to uh, figure out how to get it to melt. But basically, I'm gonna be taking these guys and finding a way to bolt them through the bottom onto this guy, which is then going to, uh, actually, I believe the shorter one may fit in there. Regardless, we're gonna have to figure out this 3D puzzle without instructions. I would imagine it goes something like that. And uh, let's see what I come up with. Looking at the inside of the trunk, this is recessed almost like a bowl, which correlates to these being recessed like a bowl. So that's going to give you a little bit more uh, weight distribution so you don't pull the screws out. I believe that's where those go. In addition to that, without scratching the hell out of the lid, this bracket already has nuts embedded and they line up quite nicely with here, there, there, and there. So I think I know how this mounts to that. The next trick is figuring out how this mounts onto the Watcha Jobber. And unlike my sport touring motorcycles, this is a mounting plate that is not a uh, quick release. So once we install this, it's essentially in place. It'll take five minutes to, you know, reach underneath here and remove it. So she's going to be stuck with the trunk, which is substantially better than what she had to begin with. So let's go ahead and get that done and see what parts we have left. As a universal trunk, uh, they give you all the pieces, parts for numerous different mounting solutions. So using the middle bolts and the longer uh, braces and a couple of the washers and all, I came up with this. It's not even tightened yet. It's just finger tight. It's on there pretty good. So again, we have four. We have a washer underneath each one. And then we have a washer and a... Um, uh crush washer there basically all of these braces are going to be going across all the ribs holding it in place so again i mean i can move the whole bike by giving that a shake so the only other thing i have to do now before i actually secure it is i need to make sure there's enough space here 
for the trunk to actually sit. Otherwise, I may need to slide this back a bit. But even then, most of the hardware is hidden to the point where you have to get on your you know, knees or crouch to see it. So actually is going to look pretty clean. Let's go ahead and make sure that fits here. And as expected, it does not. So we are, I mean, maybe if I push, this side would hold and then I can rock it into that side. But you can see I'm essentially missing by the diameter of the screw. So I'm gonna see if I can't pull the bracket back just the least littlest bit. I believe the way I secured it is going to, um, actually, no, we should be in business. I should be able to move that back a little bit. I may have to loosen it. But uh, again, confirm your fitment before you tighten everything up. Couple of relocations and realigns later, air squared away. Make sure you maintain the gap here and make sure that your tilt is correct and let's secure it up. Out with the old and on with the new. So like I said, it blends quite nicely, gives us a full face helmet space of storage that's watertight or uh, at least weatherproof. In addition to the storage here, in addition to maintaining some uh, sissy bars for occupants to use and a bar here and she can use the uh, cargo netting to strap things up against this giving it a place less likely to be falling off the back while giving us additional reflective material while i'll be putting more reflective material there and giving us by comparison uh, by contrast brighter turn signals and brake lights i like it blends in quite nicely and i've already gotten a number of thank yous i imagine i'll be getting more tonight but uh that is what we have for today. The last comment I will provide for you is if you have exposed hardwares like this, go ahead and get either uh, foam from, uh, we get Amazon packages of like mason jars and shit, usually comes with foam. So line this with foam or a rag and that will protect your um, contents from buffing and you know this scratching the hell out of your cargo as it is a single cylinder. There's a little bit of vibration with it. And uh, if you use a rag, you also have a rag for wiping it down and whatnot. So that is what we have for today. This is Outside the Target Demographic. I appreciate you guys coming by. Any questions, comments, concerns you have, leave them in the comments section down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.